Hello folks. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a review of the ESOB Rebel EM215IC. I recently found myself back on the market for a dual voltage MIG machine. If you may have seen my review of the Vulcan MIG Max 215, uh, it's still working well. Uh, my cousin has been using it on his farm for a while uh, and he just decided that he really should have one of his own and it ended up we just worked out a deal and he ended up just buying mine. So I started looking for a replacement and I could have just gotten another Vulcan, but I like to try different things and see what's out there. So I just started doing some research and I found that this Rebel EM version was pretty competitive in terms of features and specs for the price. Uh, so a trip to the local welding supply and I picked one up. Now this is the EM Rebel not the EMP. The EMP is the multi-process version. It's been out a little bit longer. Uh, it's the one that kind of gets all the press. Uh, this is the MIG only version. You can probably see on the faceplate. Uh, the controls are different. It doesn't have the color display that the EMP has uh, in addition to being MIG only. Uh, but I only wanted a MIG machine so this machine fits the bill. So this will probably be a two-part review. Uh, first I'll go over the machine, uh, some of the features, specs, what it comes with, uh, and then in part two, I'll do some welding with the machine, show how it works, do some projects, uh, and just show how it does. Now, I didn't record the unboxing because, frankly, boxes aren't that interesting. Uh, so let's take a look at what was actually in it. So it does come with a flow gauge regulator. Uh, and this is a Victor brand regulator. Uh, pretty typical uh, Argon CO2 mix regulator. Nothing too special, but it is a Victor brand, name brand regulator. Adjustment feels smooth, uh, should be good quality, don't expect any problems out of this. The MIG gun it comes with is a Tweco Fusion 180. Uh, it does have a 10 foot cord. Uh, the cord feels like pretty good quality. Uh, it's flexible and yet nice and stiff, doesn't seem like it kinks real easy. Uh, seems like a nice cord. The gun itself seems pretty ergonomic, uh, comfortable to hold. Uh, trigger feels okay, doesn't feel like it's going to be super stiff or uncomfortable to hold for a long time. Uh, a lot of the Tweco stuff is made in the USA. This gun is actually made in China. Um, so I don't know if it's, you know, necessarily one of their better guns. Uh, but it is, you know, name brand Tweco gun. Seems pretty decent. Uh, one thing to note about this gun is that you do have to have a nozzle installed in order to use it. Uh, on some of them, if you wanted to run flux core or something, you could just take the nozzle off. To give yourself a little bit better view because you really don't need it. But on this gun, the nozzle actually holds the contact tip in place. So once you take the nozzle off, the contact tip actually comes out. So it's a little bit, a little bit different of a setup. Uh, you can see up in there it actually has a, a little system that, that the contact tip drops into that holds it in place. So just something to be aware of. If you want to run this gun with self-shielded flux core, um, you're just either going to have to run the standard make nozzle or get the special made flux core nozzle for it. Um, it does seem like it's built pretty stout, so I don't expect there to be any problems, but just a little bit of a different style setup. As far as the connection end for the welder, uh, it's got this nice rubber boot on it that seems pretty sturdy, kind of protects the end a little bit. And the connector, nothing special, just a standard little twist lock connector for the controls. So nothing special there, but there's a look at it. Now one thing that is nice about this coming with just kind of a standard Tweco gun is that it does come with this uh, operation manual for this gun. And the main thing that's nice about this, at least in my opinion, is the fact that there's actually a parts list in here. Uh, so there's a breakdown of the gun and all the parts. So if you want part numbers for liners, nozzles, uh, contact tips, anything like that, uh, you can get the part numbers right out of this book, type them in online. So uh, it's pretty nice that it comes with that. Um, and in addition to the one O30 contact tip that's installed in the gun, it also does come with an additional O30 contact tip as well as one O25 and one O35 contact tip. And then all wrapped up in this tape and bubble wrap, a couple extra drive rollers for different sizes and types of wire. Comes with just a basic sheet metal gauge and one extra wire guide for the drive system. Uh, it does come with a two pound spool of the ESOB Spool Arc 86 wire. It's just a standard O30 solid wire, ER70S6. Standard gas hose for the regulator. Uh, nothing too special, but it does have a, a decent feel to it. It's pretty flexible, but it doesn't, it really doesn't want to kink at all, and the connectors seem decent, so uh, pretty good gas hose. Uh, feels like it should be fairly durable as well. Here's the ground clamp and cable, uh, also 10 feet long, just like the MIG gun. 
Uh, and this does use a standard DINs connection for the ground. So that's nice if you have other ground cables with that connection or if you wanted to make yourself up a new ground cable. Uh, you don't have to open up the welder or mess with it at all. You just have to put a DINs connector on the end of your cable and you're good to go. Uh, the ground clamp is pretty typical for the included ground clamps on most welders. Just a standard stamp steel design. Just a standard steel jaw. It would be kind of nice if that was copper, but it does have this nice braided copper strap that goes between the two sides. And what I kind of tend to do, just my personal thing, I kind of end up pulling that up in there and getting it clamped in between whatever the workpiece is or my table or whatever, uh, just to kind of get a better connection. So I found that seems to help a lot of times. But either way, nothing special. Pretty standard clamp. Uh, the cable itself is not marked anywhere. Uh, it is fairly thin. Uh, I'm going to say probably no more than four, uh, four gauge wire. Um, so nothing, nothing great about the cable. Um, not bad, but you know, nothing really to write home about in terms of the ground cable. Now this is a dual voltage machine and it does come with the kind of adapter pigtail to go from 240 to 120 so that you can plug this into a standard 120 socket. Uh, and this seems like a pretty standard uh, cable that a lot of machines probably come with. Uh, but one thing I do not like about it it has this nice uh, rubber molded head, which is pretty typical and fine, but it is not attached solidly to the, to the insulation of the cord itself. If you can see, this just, you know, this just rotates freely on here. I mean, this is just totally loose on the cable. Uh, so that could be letting that stress, you know, without any kind of a strain relief here. Uh, it could be letting the stress of the cord kind of transfer into the connections inside. And this isn't something you can open up to uh, inspect or repair those connections. I kind of question the durability and longevity of this. Uh, it may be fine and it'll probably work okay, but I just I just wonder how it'll hold up long term with that happening. Not a huge deal. It's just a pigtail. I mean, you could buy or make one of these fairly easy, but just something I noted is that this is kind of disappointing. Uh, one quick note, this is the cord that's attached to the welder itself, and it is not like that at all. This is firmly attached to the cable, so uh, just something to note that the cord on the welder doesn't actually have that issue. Now the machine doesn't actually come with a full paper manual. It does come with a quick start guide. Uh, this is uh, just safety information. And then it comes with, I believe, in digital form on this little USB drive, is the full manual. So it comes with this basically little USB jump drive in here to get your full manual. Or I'm sure you can get it online from ESOB. Uh, but just be aware it does not come with a full paper manual. It also comes with this settings chart, and this is basically almost the exact same chart that's inside the door of the welder, uh, but it's just in a different language for you. And this isn't adhesive or anything. I kind of thought maybe this was peel and stick so that you can actually replace the sticker in the welder with this one, but it's not. It's just a, it's just a card with the settings on it in a different language. So that's what comes with the welder overall. Uh, pretty good quality on the accessories. Uh, the ground cable might be lacking just a tiny bit, but nothing that's not common with a lot of the welders as far as what they actually include and that adapter cable is a little bit disappointing but other than that it seems like the included accessories are pretty good uh, in terms of what i wish it came with that it didn't i wish it did come with the special flux core nozzle for the end of the mig gun if only because you can't actually run without a nozzle at all uh, with that in mind it just would be nice if it came with it but uh, not a big deal i was able to pick one up at the local welding supply uh, but it would be nice if it included it now let's take a look at the welder itself. Uh, as you can see, the controls are quite different than the EMP. Uh, rather than having the color display, uh, we have kind of more classic MIG machine controls. Uh, we have voltage adjust knob here, and this is just a, a digital knob. Uh, we have wire feed speed or th material thickness knob here, and then we have kind of a mode knob here. S-MIG is a synergic mode, and it's it's what ESOB calls Smart MIG. Now, even though this doesn't have the digital display, uh, there's a few less settings that you can adjust. It still does have the Smart MIG mode that the EMP welder has. Uh, and ESOB claims that as you weld in SMIG mode, the welder will kind of automatically adjust some settings to try and keep the arc smooth, uh, even as your technique changes. So in any of these SMIG settings, you just pick the wire size that you're using and then pick the thickness of the material that you're welding, and the welder takes care of everything else. So pretty much a standard synergic mode operation, uh, just like on a Miller Matic or something along those lines. 
uh, and you also have a manual mode here. If you turn this knob over to any of the manual settings, um, then you have just normal control of the wire feed speed here, and then this will control your voltage. When you're in any of the SMIG modes, uh, the voltage knob doesn't do anything at all, and actually the voltage display even goes blank when you're not welding, just because the only thing you're setting is the thickness. And even though it doesn't have the color display, it still does have digital display for voltage and wire feed speed, uh, so that's kind of nice. Most of the other MIG welders in this kind of price and size category don't have that, so that's one feature that this has kind of over some of the competition. Uh, the knobs do have a good feel. They feel solid and smooth. Uh, they adjust nice. Uh, they have a good feel to them. Uh, no issues there. Everything feels nice. So moving down the front of the welder here, obviously we have the MIG gun connection point here. Uh, this is for the MIG gun control or spool gun connection. And then we have our positive and negative power outputs here. This little pigtail here goes into the MIG gun connection. So in order to change polarity, all you have to do is take this DINS connector and move it over to the negative uh, or positive, depending on what wire you're running and what polarity it, it prefers. So very easy to change. You just move this pigtail over to whichever spot you need the MIG gun to be in and then just connect your ground to the other spot. Uh, one quick note about the overall feel of the machine. Uh, as with a lot of the welders nowadays, there's a lot of plastic on the body of it. Uh, plastic handles and plastic trim. Uh, but the plastic on this machine actually feels a little bit nicer than the plastic on some of the other welders I've handled. Uh, certainly the Vulcan, uh, even I would say the, the Miller and the Lincolns. Um, it's a little bit of a, maybe a softer plastic. Um, it doesn't feel real soft and flexible, and yet it just doesn't feel quite like that super hard plastic uh, that most of them have. It gives it kind of more of a quality feel, kind of seems like it would maybe be a little bit more durable, a little bit more impact resistant. Uh, so just a quick note that the plastic on this welder feels a little bit nicer than some others. Now moving on to the back of the welder, we have the gas input here and the power switch. Uh, it's just a standard rocker switch, but they do have this kind of a clear rubber boot over top of the switch. And that's nice for preventing metallic dust and dirt and grit from getting into this switch over time. Um, how much of a difference it'll really make in the longevity of this switch or, the, or anything like that is kind of hard to say, but now it's a nice touch and it just shows that at least they were, you know, kind of trying to limit the amount of grit that's getting into the switch. And then moving down, we have the power cord connection here and then the data tag. Uh, this power cord, uh, just note, um, it is 14 gauge, uh, so not a super heavy cord. It is fairly short. Uh, the power cord's about five and a half feet long. So not a super long power cord. Uh, it is only 14 gauge, which I'm sure is, is probably plenty with only a five and a half foot length, but that would have been nicer to see a 12 gauge cord and maybe one that was even six or eight feet long. But, uh, but it is high quality cord. It's SOOW cord. 105C rated, so good quality cord, but just a little bit uh, thinner and shorter than I would have liked. So here's the data tag. Uh, nothing you can't find online, but uh, still nice to take a quick look at it. Uh, but one thing that's real nice is that even on 120 volt input, we have 100% duty cycle at 90 amps. Uh, that's higher than a lot of the 120 only MIG welders you'll see. Uh, most of them are going to be running more like a 20% duty cycle at 90 amps, and this one's actually running a 20% duty cycle all the way up at 130 amps. Um, I don't know how quickly you'll actually blow a breaker at that. I am going to weld with this on 120 volts on a 20 amp breaker, and I'll turn it up as high as it'll let me turn it on 120, and we'll see if it blows a breaker and how much output I can get out of it. Uh, but just based on these specs alone, this should be actually pretty darn capable on 120 volt. Uh, so here's the door to access the wire drive system. And just another little touch, kind of like the boot over the switch. Just another touch that leads to kind of a nice feel. Uh, this door opens and closes very nice, and the reason for that is you actually have a small roller, a spring-loaded roller here, which is actually the latch mechanism, and that just leads to a, a, very, a very good feel to the opening and closing of this door. Uh, it closes tight with no rattle, and it opens and closes smooth and easily. Uh, it's a little touch that in the grand scheme doesn't really make much difference, but it just kind of lends to the overall uh, nice feel of this machine. Wire drive mechanism is pretty much par for the course in this class of machine. Cast aluminum, uh, single drive roll, it doesn't have a dual driven roller, uh, but this just a bearing roller up at the top, but it's okay, it feels smooth. Um, I've used other welders with this exact type of setup, it never had an issue. Uh, this is spring loaded, so it just pops right up and out of the way. 
you have just your standard tension adjust knob here and to change the drive roller you just unscrew this little knob and the drive roll slides straight off it is keyed you can see the keyway in the roller there if this would focus then you just have a little key on the shaft so nothing too complicated or out of the ordinary there and this is the little wire guide that it comes with a spare of in the bag and then you have your knob for locking the MIG gun in place and one thing to note is that this is an all metal knob so the knob itself and the threads they're all one piece of metal so it's a pretty sturdy design whether or not that offers a real advantage or not I'm sure it could be debated probably not a huge thing but that's just something to note that that is an all metal knob and this is the uh, wire spool system it can accept four or eight inch spools uh, your tension adjustment is actually uh, this hex head screw here in the middle uh, it's not a wing nut or anything like that but i find that i can actually loosen this by hand if i reach in there i'm able to turn it without any issue but just with my fingers to loosen it or even to remove it so not a big deal that it's not like a toolless design with a wing nut or something like that but i haven't found that i actually need a tool to remove it uh, but even so it wouldn't be the worst thing just to have a, a wrench or socket or something for that just in case uh, and with that removed you can see that you do have just kind of a uh, maybe a brass washer back here uh, just to kind of reduce friction for the spool make it spin a little bit more smoothly and i do feel that the tension adjustment works pretty well uh, this does turn fairly smooth and the adjust the tension adjustment adjusts pretty smooth and pretty linear linearly uh, that seems like it works pretty well no issues there now this door itself does have a little detent that actually holds it open so once you push it past that it kind of has like a kind of has a slight spring detent to keep it open so again just another little touch that doesn't make a big difference but there it is and then on the inside of the door you have kind of your standard settings chart with starting points for different types of wire wire thickness material thickness uh, just to kind of give you starting points for settings and this chart kind of has it's not just a standard cardboard sticker it almost feels like plastic uh, it seems like it should be pretty sturdy and you know probably hold up for a long time so there you have a look at the welder what it comes with um, it does have a pretty good overall feel um, has good fit and finish and gives a good impression of good build quality and the accessories seem overall good quality with just the few little things that i did point out now this mig gun did come with a note that it has an 030 slash 035 liner size installed uh, and it says for best results with 025 wire they do recommend installing a different liner uh, i do have some 025 wire that i'm going to be running for testing and i'm just going to use the included liner uh, i'll see how it does and i'll let you know if there's any issues or anything but um, i'm just going to run it as is and see how it does thought i'd give you a quick look this is the flux core nozzle that i picked up for the machine doesn't come with it but i did buy this locally this is the metal part that screws onto the end of the gun to hold the contact tip in place and then it also comes with just a insulator that threads on around it so if you wanted to run self-shielded flux core and you didn't want to use the mig nozzle it comes with uh, you can pick these up uh, now unfortunately they do come two to a pack and they're not super cheap so again it would have been nice if it came with one of these so i think that about wraps it up for the first look and the look at the accessories so i'll get it all set up and for part two i'm going to do a bunch of welding with the machine I'm going to run multiple sizes of solid wire. I'm going to run some self-shielded flux core, and I actually picked up some dual shield flux core as well. So I'm going to be trying that out on this machine and let you know how that goes. And I have both C25 and 100% CO2 I'm going to be running with the welder. So really going to put it through all of its paces and see how it does. So keep an eye out for that. Hopefully I should have that posted up soon. Uh, in the meantime, if there's any questions or if there's anything you think I forgot to cover, uh, just post it up down below. As always, thank you very much for watching. Take care.